Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today I want to make something really interesting for my deep sea cabinet out of these wonderful panels from the 1990s. Now as you can see I've been collecting these for quite a while on my brick halls and I've got an absolute load of the yellow ones and the vital number of eight white ones so I can have a bit of an accent colour for whatever I choose to build. Uh, and they were in all sorts of 90s diver sets including 6441 Deep Reef Refuge which actually had the white ones uh, as part of the kind of undersea station there and the yellow ones uh, as part of a submarine going down to it so yeah lots of different possibilities and those are the first two sort of ideas I had to use these to build a base underwater some sort of lab maybe where these are the windows into it or maybe a submarine of course but it just seems a bit ordinary really I mean I've got lots of different plans for bases already and I've also got loads and loads of submarines waiting to go into the deep sea cabinet so hmm, I wanted to do something a little bit different now at this point I would normally show you the cabinet and where we're up to really but it's a bit of a dumping ground actually it's a bit of an embarrassment everything that I've been building or halfway through building or collecting parts for is just in a heap in there at the moment so I'll just show you this picture from the last time we did a build in there and this is of the main sort of floor of the cabinet uh, where we've got our big station. So I don't want to do anything that competes with that. Uh, and the wreck that's on that floor of the Silent Mary will actually be going onto another floor lower down later on. So essentially, I want to build something that's going to go on the left hand side of that main floor. Uh, so just as a recap of what my uh, 20,000 bricks under the sea cabinet will look like. Essentially, it came with uh, one too many shelves, which I removed one of. So we'd have basically the surface layer, which is a glass shelf with all of my ships on with holes underneath. Uh, then I'd have uh, the main level, which is what we're talking about today with lots of different stations and divers and all the rest of it. And then we'd have two levels of the depths, one being full of sort of beasties and one full of UV goodness. Yes, <laughs> loads of mysterious stuff right at the bottom. So yes, this is for the main floor, but not a submarine and not a base. Hmm. So what I was thinking was uh, just playing with these, trying to sort of piece them all together was that they can kind of be used to make a very good looking tube. Essentially, if you get two sort of constructions like this, I'll move all these chaps out of the way, then we can use modified bricks to join these sections together to kind of go like that and make a tunnel. And I thought that would look rather good. So to show you what I mean, I'm just going to make one very small section of it, kind of like this. And then that can join onto there. You have to be a bit careful with this, otherwise it will splinter around and fire bits across my desk. But there you go. There's one section of tube. And it's got quite a good amount of space inside. So it could either go that way for a kind of walkway with studs halfway up one side, or maybe it should go that way uh, for divers sort of swimming in more horizontally. Or maybe it's been drained of water entirely uh, and it's actually air in there. I don't know. But if I make this really long, and that's why I wanted uh, eight of the white ones, so I could do two of these sections in white as well and have it got a kind of alternating yellow, white, yellow, and so on. Um, I could make a really long tube. I don't know exactly how long yet, but <laughs> fairly long, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then that could link two of my existing bases together rather than making a whole nother one uh, on its own. So yeah, that's my thinking uh, to start with. So I think what I'm going to do is, well, mock up the uh well how long i can get to see what we can uh, add to it to make it even more interesting and then i figure we'll probably have it on stilts kind of on legs uh, over the sea bottom so uh yeah let's get started with that well i've started building my transport tube and i absolutely love the shape i think you'll agree it looks absolutely great all those angles and that repeating circular window it's not particularly strong at the moment but i will be able to strengthen it on both the top and the bottom in due course and you can see i've put one of those white stripes in there and i think those bricks will be covered up so it won't uh, look like there's a break in that band there um, but I've already started thinking a little more about how this transport tube might work and I think it might be some sort of monorail 
Uh, so to give it strength on the inside, I thought I might add some of these single rail pieces that you used to get from old train sets and kind of put that ugh, in there. And that will not only hold it nice and firm, but well, maybe I can build a little trolley that actually slides along this on the inside, either for moving loads of cargo from the main station into one that's maybe built into the rock or something like that, or uh, maybe just to move personnel. So yeah, I think that'll be a really good idea and we can hopefully peer down it. And that's the thing, actually, this view is one of the best ones, isn't it? So I figure it might be good to have this tube not completed, so it's sort of sealed at both ends with two different stations, but maybe have it attached to one and have the other end open uh, like it's under construction so you can peer down it. And I just think that view is really, really nice. So uh, yeah, I think under construction, attached to one base, on stilts with a monorail going on inside. Uh, cool, so that's one decision made and that'll give it a bit more strength. <laughs> um, another decision is just to really jazz up the outside and there's not much I can do really apart from on this band here. So I will think I'll have it this way up uh, so we can see this on the sides. And one thing I thought rather than adding yet another uh, two by four tile like I did on this side, I could add some jumper plates and add things like a phone piece. Why a phone? Well, just because it's an interesting shaped handle, really. Nothing more than that for a bit of texture every now and then. And then I can have another one when the next white stripe comes on about there, I think. Uh, then I was also thinking about stickers because you know me, I love a bit of a sticker. And I was looking through all of the yellow ones that I've been collecting for my undersea builds and so on. And there's quite a few actually. And some of them really apt because they're on two by four tiles already. Uh, so there's this pair here, one that's got uh, well, some gubbins and an electric panel, and this one that's got some different gubbins and a flammable panel. Now, that seems less appropriate for under the sea. I don't know how it's going to catch fire there, so I might ditch that one. But this one seems very appropriate, and I've got quite a few of them. Uh, now, both of them came with the really big helicopter that is the T Rex Hunter uh, 5886, one of the dino sets from 2012. So I think I will be using those perhaps on the end like that. So that's a bit of a, well, I don't know, service panel or something or other. So that's good. Uh, and then I thought I might reuse the stickers that I pulled off some of these. Uh, they come with all sorts of stickers attached from all of the diver sets, and a lot of them were in very bad condition. But I did save them, and there are a few that I can reuse. So the ones from set 6441 uh, that we already looked at had this sticker. So that's really nice, 441. And the adjacent set, 6442, Stingray Explorer, also from 1997, uh, had this one. So I've put them, well, onto 2x4 tiles, as you can see, using my patented hot tea technique. And uh, yeah, I think I can use them as well. So maybe each section has got its own designated number or something like that, which gives uh, people who are trying to give it maintenance or maybe build it sort of IKEA style uh, instructions put part 441 into part 442, <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, other ones I've got, this round one with a submarine on. I'm not sure if that's appropriate with a submarine, given this is a tunnel, so I probably won't use that one. Repair Bay, that's from uh, uh, the Sentai Fortress XO4 set uh, 7709, but it doesn't really look like a repair bay to me, so I think I'll save that one. Uh, but this, oh yes. I do like this, so I think I'll be using these as well. This is the Aqua Raiders sort of symbol uh, from sets like 7773, Tiger Shark Attack uh, from 2007. So, oh yes, that'll be really good. So I'm gonna see how many of these I've got and how many I can use, and I'll probably put them on both sides. If I do them across two of these panels, it will give it more strength. I'll get some more blue rails, and uh, yeah, we'll make an even bigger tube. Hey, look at this. Looking good now, isn't it? Wow. Imagine that going off into the distance. <laughs> well, I've had to zoom out because it's got a lot bigger now. Uh, and wow, it looks a lot better with these stickers on, I must say. So I've got uh, the panel, then the white band, Trident, panel 441, uh, panel 442, Trident and so on. So it's sort of a semi-repeating pattern. And uh, yeah, it looks absolutely great. And it's a bit stronger than it was before. Uh, those two gray bricks will become yellow in due course, but I don't suppose it'll really matter when we've got a bit of trim along the top. 
So yeah, looking really good. And I've deliberately made it very irregular at this end because this end is going to be the bit that is under construction. So we've got a rail completely sticking out. We've got these modified bricks where I've swapped to the ones with studs on only one side. So it doesn't look like they're all joined together with studs. It looks like they're, I don't know, welded into position by divers. Uh, and I think that looks really good. So we get to sort of peek inside and I want to position the whole thing so we can look down it. Oh, sorry, everyone, <laughs> from uh, one particular angle or other. Uh, and I've done the same with the stickers on this side. And I think it's looking good as a result. I just love these round windows at absolutely every angle. Uh, and they're all reflecting the light rather well as well. So, yeah, very happy with that. Now, I've left off the second one of panel 442 because I think these are service panels. And I think that some of them might be openable so you can do some work on, well, whatever's underneath. So I'm going to put two hinge uh, bricks on the underside of that. Then I'm just going to put one of these one by twos with loads of electrical sort of goings on. They were part of all the UFO sets of 2007, like uh, 6818 Cyborg Scout. Uh, if you're interested, so I'm just going to put that under there. I'm going to put an orange light because that will also reflect that color scheme and I'm just going to add this just so there's a little handle for a diver's hand to be attached to so if somebody's working on this uh, area then we'll need to attach the diver so they're kind of floating in the water of course so I think that is good there and then this can go on the top and be hinged up like that <laughs> so that looks very interesting I think doesn't it, it adds a lot more uh sort of texture to that otherwise smooth side and uh, if I have a diver hanging off that with uh, maybe I don't know a spanner or a screwdriver or something it looks like he's working on it now it's not very realistic in a sense because this wall isn't really very thick and how would that all get recessed when it went down it's a bit chunky on the depth but I think we can forgive it that uh, and give it a bit of a <laughs> a TARDIS quality that allows it to be bigger on the inside and on the outside because I really like that and it gives a reason for why we've got these numbers because they're all service hatches that might need uh, working on from time to time so, so that's great so I'm going to attach a diver to that in a minute I know it's going to be a really fragile connection so it will fall off every time I pick this up uh, so I won't do it just yet uh, and I've also after doing all that I've got two more panels so I could add them on the end, but then it just looks very uh, uniform, like it's been chopped off by a knife. So I don't really want that. So I figure these would just be on the seabed nearby uh, as the next two that are being uh, added to the construction, making it ever longer, linking two of my bases together. I think that would be absolutely great. Uh, and then for this top band, I think I'm going to use some of this piping. Uh, I've got this silver piping because I bought some for a ship and I bought too much. So I've actually got two of these left so one will go up to about there and another one up to about there so i mean it's absolutely perfect isn't it so if i add these modified uh, tiles or plates depending how you look at it and then a tile and another one and so on i can clip these in and have another grab rail and maybe that's where the other diver is clinging on uh, with a tool in hand uh, ready to help with the work I think that'll be really good uh, and then we can have some sort of feet on the bottom to suspend it above uh, the surface of the sand because I want to have loads of plants and I don't know fish and all the rest of it in there so yeah I'll keep working but I love that service panel what do you think good good well there it is with the rail attached as well and I think that is looking absolutely great and it's very fortuitous that it comes almost to the end of the finished section but uh, yeah looking good I mean it seems a bit of a shame in one regard that I'm using all of these pieces on one build but then again that allows you to go for some really serious scale and make quite an impressive uh, kind of non-lego shaped uh, build really I mean it's a very interesting profile indeed isn't it with it uh, having this angle on all four sides so I think that this could be made even more interesting by basically mounting it in a cabinet at a diagonal angle like this maybe with a base in the very back left hand corner uh, with the front of this well right in the middle of the cabinet at the front I suppose and that would also allow you to have a good pier down it uh, and I might have to put in a monorail car or something like that 
Uh, so it looks like it could be in use and we know what it's for. Uh, so in uh, the building stage, I suppose it will be full of water, but maybe when it was completed, it would be sealed and drained. That would make a lot more sense for making fast progress. So yeah, I really like that. So I think two things remain. One is some feet. Uh, and I was looking at all the pieces I had uh, to basically mount this above the sea floor. And it just turned out that I had absolutely loads of this piece. Uh, and this isn't why I was buying them, actually. These ones with Caution O2 stickers on. These are the tanks on a, on a submarine that uh, go for very cheap. And I just wanted the stickers so I could put them on loads of oxygen tanks uh, that are being transported down to the uh, bottom uh, from the surface. Uh, but that means I've actually got loads of these pieces once I've removed the stickers, uh, which, well, to me, look very much like feet if I had this round jumper plate to the top. Uh, so using the power of a uh, three, four, five triangle, and I want this to be diagonal, so it'll have to be uh, every five studs one of these. So if I do that sort of one, two, three, four, five, then basically, I'll just continue that for one more, one, two, three, four, five, then that should be three studs uh, that way, four studs that way, three that way, four that way, which will allow me to mount it diagonally like that. And I think those feet look rather good, actually. I'll just make sure all the stickers aren't showing for now. I'll move those in due course once I've uh, found a place to put them. But it will look... Oh, it's hard to do this one because it's so long. There we go. Uh, I think that looks quite low profile, but quite fun and Quite frequent, but it looks like a heavy beast. So, uh, yeah, I think that'll look really good. What do you think of those? Yeah, I'm liking that. So I'm just going to take those off temporarily when I talk about the second thing that I need to do, which is add a bit of a scene. So as I've said already, I'm going to do a building scene with these uh, on the ground nearby and our intrepid divers doing some work. So I figured I'd give one a spanner and maybe they would be working attached to the panel. Give the other one uh, attached up here on the rail. Maybe give them another Ikea-esque tool. <laughs> kind of, what do you call that? I mean, you use it for changing tyres, really. But it's uh, like a really big one of those Allen key type uh, wrenches. So that's a good idea for up there. And it's very big uh, and interesting and obvious to spot. So I think that's going to be important in the cabinet because it's going to be so busy. So I can attach those. And then why not have... Uh, an unmanned vehicle giving a bit of a hand. It's got two hands, so why doesn't it hold a drill in one of them? And maybe it can be passing that or doing the drilling itself, maybe. I don't know. So that could be the third sort of person who's helping. And then why not have a fourth person helping? Similar colour scheme, uh, but on the seafloor this time. I could have a crab, uh, and he's got big grabbers, so maybe he's either helping by passing on a hammer uh, because all builds like this do need persuading from time to time with a hammer. Or maybe he's just making off with it. <laughs> I don't know. But I think that that is quite a funny little scene. Uh, so yeah, I'll try and stage what I'm going to do in the cabinet on a base plate in a moment. And we'll see how it looks. So yeah, I'm going to mount it on its legs. Put all that in place on here. Uh, and then we can uh, put it in the cabinet at a later date. Wow, wow, wow. Look at that! <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. This looks absolutely fantastic. So we've got all the panels that are going to be built uh, onto the end of here. And we've got one diver suspended from the rail at the top with a big tool. Looks good. Drill on the unmanned vehicle that's helping out. And the man working on service panel 442. And the pesky crab <laughs> that's stolen the hammer is running off. I uh, really like that. That is such a funny scene. That just literally came to me as I was talking to you a moment ago. Uh, but I absolutely adore it now. That is staying. <laughs> and then just a bit more sea life to make it look like it's uh, underwater. I'll do that a lot better in due course. But the angle that it's on is really good, isn't it? So, yeah, we're going five studs diagonally for every three uh, towards us and four across. Uh, so it really goes off into the distance. So I'll definitely have to have that back corner uh, joining up with some sort of uh, space base that's uh, maybe a facade base or something like that that's right in the corner of the cabinet. Uh, and it'll have this view coming towards us with all those lovely stickers on. I think it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, and we've got stickers on the backside as well. Uh, you won't really see those at all unless you're really craning your neck, I don't think. But um, I'll know they're there. 
and it does look really good on that side actually as well and these legs look great as well i've angled them so the sticker is facing uh, away just for today but i will remove those in due course because i don't think they'd be full of oxygen but um yeah tell me what you think of that but um i'm absolutely loving it it's so obvious that we've got both a building scene at one end, a service scene in the middle, and a little funny scene as well. I absolutely adore that. I think that's actually my favourite part of the whole build. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm really happy with that. Uh, I was just inspired to buy these pieces because of their interesting shape, and I bought far too many, and wow, this is the result. So it's very lucky that I did all of that fantastic result I think and adding these rails was inspired uh, but I do need your help as usual I'm going to need some sort of name for this uh, transport system I think the best I can come up with is aqua rail uh, I'm not sure that that's brilliant but uh, it'll do for now as a placeholder before I get your suggestions uh, but as always thank you very much for watching it is appreciated do remember to like comment and subscribe for more awesome lego videos and if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. Your support is appreciated. Uh, and next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing our mall. What are we up to now? Part four, I think, uh, on Monday. Uh, and that'll be a whole new section. I think we'll be starting right at the other end of the mall uh, and then working towards joining the two parts together. Um, and then on Wednesday we're doing a brick haul and then Friday we'll do another mock build and maybe it'll be under the sea again. Who knows? I just love the motion in these scenes. It's absolutely great, isn't it? Uh, we haven't even started with all of the coral pieces and so on. So yeah, brilliant. So until all of that, see you!